Ibada hii inafanyika katika uwanja wa kanisa katoliki la St Benedictine hapa Tigoni na ibada yenyewe inatarajiwa kwamba itaweza kuendelea hadi mwendo wa saa nane adhuhuri na kisha maiti yake iweze kupelekwa nyumbani kwake kwa mazishi kama nilivyosema inatarajiwa kwamba huenda rais uhuru Kenya ataweza kufika hapa na pengine naibu rais na vile vile kiongozi wa chama cha ODM Raila Odinga ata anatarajiwa manake tayari tumeona wapambe wake walishafika mapema kabisa kwa hivyo wao ndio baadhi ya viongozi ambao tunawasubiri na imeweza kusemekana kwamba uh, walikuwa marafiki sana wawili hao na itakumbukwa kwamba alipokuwa anaugua baadhi ya wanasiasa ambao walionekana kumtembelea nyumbani kwake na kupiga picha na kuzitundika mitandaoni miongoni mwao ilikuwa ni msali ya mdavadi Raila Odinga uh, vile vile uh, ambao walionekana kuwa na ye siku za hivi karibuni sasa bila shaka tutajiwa hapa na kwa sasa hebu tuweze kusikiza wenzake waliokuwa na shiriki pamoja katika uh, mchezo wa golf ambao wanatoa maombolezo kwa niaba wao hebu tumsikize of this amazing man who inspired so many where he was born and brought up I am Bogu Amadu, the chairman of the Mbere Golf Club. In February 1962, three young, brave and uh, daring golf caddies, led by Ginyo Kariuki, himself a golf caddy, I would say in a moment of uh, youthful indiscretion, pleaded with the then colonial DC to grant them authority to start an African golf club. They succeeded. They founded Duberry Golf Club. Thus, Ginyo Kariuki started what has turned out to be a lifelong relationship with his home golf club. From 1963, in this first ever indigenous golf club, Amazing developments took place. From this tiny village club, over the years, there emerged incredible golfing talent, such as the late John Musheru and, surprisingly, Duncan Degwa of uh, Central Bank fame, among many others. Later, Ginyo Kariuki, himself an accomplished golfer, in 1985 founded the Kenya professional golfers association. In 1986, Ginyo Kariuki gallantly fought off determined land grabbers who had schemed to subdivide the golf course into commercial plots. He successfully secured a high court injunction, the basis of which this club survives 33 years later. Inspired by the patron, by our patron, Ginyo Kariuki, Duberi golfers are so passionate about golf that in 2019, and that is last year, this tiny but dynamic village golf club produced the best pair of golfers in Kenya, who went on to proudly represent Kenya in an international tournament in Portugal. They merged third best in the world. That's not bad coming from a, a tiny club whose subscription is only 200 shillings a month. In addition, our captain, Michael Karanga, was in 2018 the winner of Kenya safari tour where he beat 50 golf professionals.
where the sports minister or his office might wish to consider maybe starting a golf academy at uh, Duberry Golf Club. The golf club is housed in rented premises, squeezed between shops at the local shopping center. The golf course also hosts footballers, basketballers, netballers, and uh, other sports. Three canopies provide shade for women, chama meeting venues. Stray donkeys and sprinting goats on the golf course are a persistent hazard, but uh, golfers have learned to take that all in their stride. The late Ginyo, Ginyo Karyuki's dream over the decades has been for his village golf club to have a clubhouse. At the golf course, club officials are pursuing this vigorously. And there is every indication that um, our patron's dream may indeed be realized. This will be a fitting memory of this Kenyan golf legend whose selfless sacrifice has inspired so many in his home area, Numberi. To our late patron, Ginyo Karioki, we say, you fought the good fight. We shall continue from where you left off. May God rest Ginyo Karioki's soul in eternal peace. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, thank you very much. That is the representative for the Dumberi Golf Club. They actually call it St. Andrews Dumberi. If you have time and you pass by Dumberi, Governor, you know the place. That's the St. Andrews. Our next um, uh, speaker will be the representative of the Kenya Golf Union, uh, who is Mr. Angela. Please, Mr. Angela, come over. Uh, the family of the late Nginyo uh, Karyuki, uh, the church, all the mourners, good morning. I'm here to say a few things on behalf of the chairman of the Kenya Golf Union, Anthony Murage, who is not with us here. And before I do that, my very first humble duty is to request all the golfers here present to be upstanding and wave to the congregation as our salute to our fallen guka of golf, the late Lawrence Nginyo Karyuki. Tafadali. Thank you very much. You can see for yourselves that karaoke indeed has been mourned deeply by his fellow uh, golfers. The many golfing activities that um, the late Nginyo karaoke undertook have been very well documented, and I think I'll not go into that. But I would like to share at least three things. One, in 2018, that was May 2018, we had a function at Mthaiga Golf Club where His Excellency Mwai Kibaki launched a book to be written on golf, and the book is called Kenya Through the Lens of Golf. That book will shortly be out of the printing press, and I hope that you will be able to get yourselves a copy in which we had the opportunity to talk to the late Nginyo Karyuki, and most of the material in that book came from him because he gave us the history of golf when it started in Dumberi and how they fought for golfer space in this country up to where we are now. Point number two. 
is that uh, Nginyo Karaoke as a person, and I'm not aware of anybody who may have persuaded him to do that, but we are fully aware that Nginyo has put his money and resources and time and energy on the line to support caddies in this country. The golf clubs in this country employ something maybe more than two, 3,000 uh, uh, employees who are working as caddies. I'm sorry, I didn't check the statistics. I'm just mentioning a number. But among those uh, caddies, it is some of them who, like himself, have risen to form our present crop of the professional golfers of, uh, of Kenya. And out of his own volition, um, Nguyenye has not, Nguyenye has not stopped on anything. He has year in, year out, sponsored a golf association or the golfers to play golf at Mathaiga Golf Club. And sometimes he has even enabled them to travel to Uganda or to Tanzania to play golf with their um, counterparts. And that is a good deed indeed. Point number three is that um, sometime in February 2018, I had the privilege of leading a delegation of uh, junior golfers to State House Nairobi, where they were to be given a flag before proceeding to Morocco to represent the country. And during that uh, encounter with President Uhuru Kenyatta, I did raise the point that currently in this country we don't have enough golfers. Out of the 47 counties, only 19 counties have golf clubs. 28 counties have zero golf clubs. They don't know what a golf club looks like. And that they, it would be good going forward for the government and for the county uh, governors to support the Kenya Golf Union so that we can make sure that golf is going to reach all the 47 counties by establishing county golf parks. And to that effect, the Kenya Golf Union even created a special vehicle, a company called County Golf Parks Limited, which will be carrying on uh, that uh, project. And immediately after I left the uh, State House, uh, I had to rush to Nginyo Karaoke, being a supporter of the golf. Even before going to see my late friend uh, Nginyu, one other remarkable thing is that uh, while I was at the State House in February uh, 2018, His Excellency had pointed out to the then CS and the then PS uh, to put uh, the chairman of the Kenya Golf Union, not necessarily myself, but to put them on uh, some board that would drive uh, the project of county gold parks. I'm told consultations are still going on, so we shall wait patiently. But I am happy to note that um, Governor Nyoro of Kiambu is here with us. And my special request on behalf of the Kenya Golf Union would be that you work with us so that um, we can find a small piece of land within Kiambu where we can build a small uh, county golf parks, nine holes, in memory of Lawrence uh, Nginyo Karyuki. I know there have been um, some efforts that perhaps uh, Ndumeri should be renamed uh, Nginyo Karyuki, but uh, we don't want to interfere with uh, Ndumeri. It has its own history as the cradle of golf in this country, and let it remain as Ndumeri, and we shall use it as the model as we spread the message of golf uh, throughout the country. So after State House, I went and met Ms. Nginyo and told him, look, we have been at State House, and the president is very receptive to the idea of spreading golf throughout the whole country by creating 47 county golf parks. This is a project that is uh, ongoing, and we'll ask all of you to, uh, to support it. As I finish my remarks, I wish to assure the family of the Nginyo Karaoke that uh, we have uh, been deeply affected by the passing on of Nginyo Karaoke, and we, we mourn him deeply because we feel indeed orphaned. But going forward, 
I hope that you will not lose sight of what Nginyo Karyoki has uh, had started, because for a long time to come, Lawrence Nginyo Karyoki is going to remain a very strong reference point by anybody talking about uh, golf in the country, in Kenya, in East Africa, and the world. And on that note, once again, on behalf of the Kenya Golf Union, we pray that uh, may the Lord rest the soul of Lawrence uh, Karyoki Nginyo in eternal peace. Amen. Well, thank you very much, Bono Wanjala, uh, for your brief remarks. We now would like to invite the Professional Golfers Association representative, if he's here. Uh, it was expected to be Mr. Kasuku, and uh, looks like, is it you are coming up? Please hurry up, Mr. Kasuku, will give us your, your remarks as the Professional Golfer Association member. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Archbishop Kibaravara and the chairman of the committee which organized this funeral uh, be taking yourself in readiness. Karibu. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, to the family of the late Lawrence Nginyo Karaoke, uh, the dignitaries, fellow mourners, good afternoon. My name is Alicia Kasuku. I'm representing the Professional Gophers Association of Kenya at the moment here. Uh, on behalf of the Professional Gophers of Kenya, today I'm here to mourn with the family of Lawrence. Lawrence was our first professional gophers of Association of Kenya Chairman. He did a lot. He made us go through the difficult time he had during the competition of the Kenya Open. He made us play in the Kenya Open, although we were not allowed to play all of us, but Lawrence put his foot down. Lawrence, remembering Lawrence, I know the program has been put there. But during the amateur time, Lawrence played among the legends of the world. I'll take Sam Snead, Peter Thompson, Bob Charles. During the Kenya Open, when he was playing as an amateur, Lawrence won as the best amateur during the Kenya Open. The pictures are there in the program where Lawrence is standing next to Peter Thompson. Lawrence knew exactly what he was up to. He represented Kenya as an amateur, and Lawrence represented Kenya in the world downhill qualifying round in Thailand, together with the late Charles Farah and Peter Njiru. Lawrence represented Kenya as a professional golfer in Zimbabwe, Zambia, Ivory Coast, and Nigeria. He founded the African Open Professional Golfing. He was the chairman of the African Professional Golf Association in 1986. Lawrence came back to start the Cadiz National, uh, the National Cadiz Association. And at the moment, 80% of the professional golfers in this country came from Lawrence Hand. Lawrence brought in Peter Njiru, the late. Peter emerged the best African champion for three years. You are truly standing here. When I turned professional, Lawrence came to me and told me, Kasuku, you have been the finest athlete in Kenya, but at the moment, I want you to turn pro. The time, time is running out for you. And eventually, Lawrence made me to play in the British Open. 
that was an achievement. He knew what he was doing, and at the moment, we owe it a lot to him. Lawrence has died, but to us, a legend doesn't die. A legend fades off. Lawrence did a lot. He did a lot. He did a lot to us, and uh, we'll owe it a lot to Lawrence forever. Rest in peace, and to the family, Pauline Sana from the Professional Golfers. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kasuku, uh, for your brief and good remarks uh, pertaining to your relationship with the late Lawrence Guinho Karaoke and your golf, which you have been playing together. Um, our next person who is going to take the microphone and speak to us shall be none other than Archbishop Jerry Kivaravara, who has been the chairman of this, uh, uh, of this committee which was organizing. And as he comes, it is also good to note that you have noted the arrival of His Excellency Raila Molo Dinga, and we also have Honorable George Mohoho here, as well as uh, uh, Gadoni Wamushomba, who is already here. Our former governor, William Kavogo, is also with us, and Stephen Disho, our speaker. Beatrice Elachi, she's also with us here. Also, the MCA, Anthony Ikonya for Kambu Municipal Council. Karibu, Buana Chairman. Mama Karioke, the fathers and uh, the church who are in charge of this service, and the family of Guinho Karioke, and our leaders, Excellencies, Mwishmiwa, Raira, and the governor of Kiambu, the senators, the cabinet secretaries, the MPs, the women reps, and all protocols observed. Uh, before I say something, Lilo, I want to ask the committee members who have been working so hard for those eight days. Can you stand up where you are? The committee members, please. I want to introduce you. This was only your last chance. Uh, you'd have come here, but maybe you are far away. Uh, uh, these people have done excellent job. Whatever you see here, as, a, a, as their chairman, they have given me a very good working relations uh, in that we have been smooth, and organized. Okay, you may be seated. Thank you very much. They have done very well, and they are very articulate. There has been honor and decency. And also another group which we may not see within the crown, all the ordained ministers of the gospel, bishops, apostles, reverends. If you are there, can you stand up, please? If you are there. We want to recognize you. And also behind me here, can you step out here? Uh, we have uh, Bishop Kachau of the Gospel Assemblies of Kenya, who is one of my bishops. I have uh, Prophet Paul Mwangi of uh, PPN Churches. I have Bishop Zabron Karanja Mbogwa Gateway International. I didn't get your name. Father, thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you very much. It's good to honor the men of God, and we thank the church for allowing us to do that. 
Mine will be very short. Uh, in that uh, Guinho is a very close friend of mine, many years. And it has been well said here, is he has a history and we cannot analyze it this afternoon at this place. But Guinho is a leader, a born leader who came from zero, a man who came from Akinyozi. He was a baba at Kiambu town, Kinyozi, you know, cutting hairs with Makasi. And that's where he began, and we've been told. And he has grown just like King David, I'm telling you. Because from nowhere, from very low, and now we are talking of a great men of, of business and of the people. He is a magnet. He's a business magnet. Or in other words, tycoon. He is, has done it very well. And we became friends many years. And I just want to quote one, uh, one thing in a light moment. Uh, we used to, when we meet, he likes, we used to talk many things as good friends in a light way. And then Guinho, I would tell him, Mr. Nguinho, you seem like you are anointed. You know, he has an anointing. Uh, and that is a religious word or a church word, anointing. Uh, for business. Because this man has favor from God to make money. And he would tell me, you two are anointed to become a preacher. You know, we, we, he is that, you know, good man. And I stand here on behalf of many other churches other than Catholic. This man has built many, many, many churches, including mine. Actually, the last public appearing, uh, appearance before he died, it was in my church at Gachi. He came and brought a lot of money, cash. He is a straightforward man. If he give you a check, he will tell you, go to the bank. And don't, just take it to the bank, don't wait. And I want to say, we have lost a father, a friend, and a man who encourages many, many people. I know him from even the political world. This man, whenever we were helping him to become an MP, let me tell you, even if he's asking for votes, he won't kneel down to anybody. He's a man who cannot kneel down to no man. Yet, he's such a loving man. Um, you know, he did it with the people uh, of all ages. And now to the family. As I'm there, I want to tell you, we want to hear good order as Muse had. This man is a man very much articulate in everything, even in the food where we, when we eat. Ginyo Kariuki is articulate in everything. And we want to pray, this is my prayer, that uh, the same peace and order we will hear, we will continue with the children. And you are now of age. You can manage this big, big business. I am sure Muse Alipanga is Sawasawa Sana. One day I asked him, have you organized yourself? He said, Bishop, don't worry. He had done it. Uh, you know, I don't want to go into details, but he told me he has done it. He has uh, organized his people and his future and the vision is well laid on the paper. And even to those who are supposed to uh, take inheritance. And we want to hear a good story. It's my prayer that we hear, even as you come out, you of age and then your other children, we want to see this legacy of uh, Honorable 
ginyo karioke continue because God loves you people. And now I can only say, uh, may our mothers, may those who are having children, mashiare, shiana, ihana, tamu dhuriogwe tonginyo wakarioke. That will be wonderful so that we have a legacy continued. I just want to read a short page here and then I sit down. But I want to thank the committee and the family for choosing me to be the chairman of the, of the funeral committee. It is with a deep sense of loss that I, I bring to you, the family, our heartfelt condolences and prayers following the final call of Mr. Nguinho, your father. Death has taken from us and a national leadership, a loving friend who is well respected, a husband, a father, and a successful businessman. He was a mentor to many. The late Mr. Nguinho Karioki will also be remembered for his service to the community and the business world, business world in the world. He was a peacemaker, a betrayer, and a reconciliator within the society. He respected all people of all ages. He had special love for Kenyan peoples. He worked with all across the tribes. It is known and is in record. And the less fortunate in the society, he helped them. He and his family are my close friends. We thank God for the time we shared with Lawrence as we mourn his passing on to glory. Let us also celebrate his life. Be inspired by the contributions he made in society and to take in the rich life lessons he has inculcated in us. Let us also cherish the memories of the time spent together. When King David in the Bible had served God's purposes in his generation and culture, he rested with his forefathers and prophets, recorded in the book of Acts 13, verse 36. May the comfort of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit help your family, your immediate relatives and friends during this difficult time. May the Almighty God rest the soul of our friend, late Lawrence, in eternal life. The earth has lost one of the most hardworking and a warrior. Now to you, Margaret, Nguinho, and family, please take courage in Jesus' mighty name. This is from our church fraternity, the Gospel Assemblies of Kenya, and also I am the chairman of Interfaith Council of Kenya. We will give you this in a while. Thank you for listening to me. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Archbishop Kibarabara. He was our chairman. And when he's the chairman, you must keep time. Otherwise, it's unlikely to open the door for you if you come late. You have been with him, but he has done well. Now we are winding up the speeches which have been made. And as we wind up, we are going to turn to the, uh, to the part of the tributes which will be paid here to the deceased. And we shall begin with Father Stephen Disho, who will come here and uh, give us his tribute on behalf of the priests who are here and others who are not represented here. Distinguished guests present, dear mourners, and the entire family of the late Ginyo Karioki, on the behalf of the clergy present here, 
I have been asked to offer our sympathy and deep condolences to the family who are mourning the loss of their dear dad. We are here to console you. We are here to ask the good Lord to give you the necessary grace to help you to support this very sad moment. Your dad, Mr. Ginyo Karioki, as it has been said, was an epitome of phenomenal. He was a great man, a great Christian, a believer, a man of faith, and that's why we are all gathered here. If he was not a man of faith, we could not be here. Apart from being a great governor, he was a man of faith. He has fought a good fight, and we celebrate him this afternoon because he kept the mark of faith. To the entire family, we can tell you, we will continue to journey with you, to pray for you, and also request you in a very humble way because your dad kept faith. Please continue the good legacy that he kept. Please continue the way it has been said. He supported the work of evangelization. We wish that you can continue with the same way. Let us also take this moment, not only to mourn, but also to celebrate his life. As we have said, as a great man. For us Christians, we know that death is not an end. Yes, Martin Heidegger said that we, as human beings, we are Zen Zum Tode, a being that walks towards death, but a Christian like Lawrence, he doesn't walk towards death empty-hearted. He walks towards his death marked with the sign of the cross, marked with the hope of resurrection, and therefore we celebrate him, and we are very hopeful that one day we'll meet him. So the family, we will continue to pray for you. And this moment, all we can say, Nekei fafwa nyua huroke, mutika muliririrege, e moko ini mega. May God bless you. Oh, thank you very much, Father. Uh, now we want to move to the tribute which was written by Mama Karaoke, and it will be read on her behalf by her person of choice, who I was told to await until she comes over. Mm. Okay. Uh, she's also Mama Karaoke. She's the wife of the youngest brother to the late Lawrence Nguinho. Uh, Mama Karaoke, Karibu. Uh, tribute from Margaret Wangari Nguinho. My dear, I remember our wedding day like it was just yesterday. I was very happy yet scared of what lay ahead in a new and unknown place. Do you remember what you said? Do not be afraid, it will be well. That clarion call has been my saving grace right through our marriage. Thank you for taking care of me. You taught me to be brave, courageous, and never to panic because you are in control of the situations. I remember during your political endeavors, great crowds of people would come home and that frightened me. You always told me not to panic and assured me that was your battle and you are in charge. I, miss, I will miss the security you gave me, but I know I will be fine as you taught me to be strong and firm in whatever I did. As I watch over our children, I know I will continue to see you and feel your presence through the values of you have instilled in them to be God-fearing truthful, hardworking, and confident. You were teased and ridiculed for your views, yet you always stood firm on your stand and were constant with your views on the best interest of the country, gracefully embracing 
your naysayers with words of wisdom. I smile as I recall how you referred to any gathering as a meeting regardless of whether it was a family meal, a talk with a grandchild, or even our children, and how you always stated what a good meeting we have had. I watched your gentleness, deep love, care, and concern for our grandchildren, how you were intimately involved with each and every one of them. You are a wonderful granddad. The words of wisdom you shared with them will forever be ingrained in their hearts and hopefully in the way they chose to live their lives. I promise that I will continue to keep the family united through the gatherings we had at home over some nyamachoma as this was your source of great happiness and joy. And I do recall your loudest laughter was heard during such occasions. My dear husband, you were a fighter. You truly amazed all of us with your strength and determination to live. Your loving spirit will continue to be our guiding light. I am sad that you are gone, while I know you are well. In the company of God and the angels, we celebrate you, my dear husband. I will miss you. Rest in peace. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mama Karioki. That is wonderful. We you know. Uh, we have taken you by surprise, but that is quite good of you. We are proud of you. We are going to follow these uh, tributes as they are in the program. And uh, the next one which will follow will be from Jane Kirago. And at the same time, we wish to acknowledge the presence of uh, Peter, uh, Honorable Peter Mwadi, the MP for Limuru, as well as the presence of uh, Honorable James Orengo, the Senator for CIA. Uh, if there are being changes uh, that Jane is unlikely to come up now, may we have, say, children. Okay. Uh, we move on. Uh, we can have uh, grandchildren um, uh, who will be represented here by... By Zana, Zana Kirago can begin, and uh, we hear from her. Zana Kirago uh, to be followed by Alison Wangari. Okay, this should be a combined one. Distinguished guests, all protocols observed. My name is Nyambura Kirago. Words could never articulate my love and appreciation for Guka. He lived a life full of integrity, a life that exemplified the beauty and the value of our culture, the strength in unity, and the power of resilience. Guka was and will always remain one of my role models. I looked up to him in so many ways, from his love for people and justice to how he sought to improve and positively influence society through many great contributions, such as the building of churches, encouraging peace among Kenyans, advocating for the multi-party democracy, and establishing the Duberi Golf Club a space and opportunity for Africans to play the sport he loved at a time when it was exclusive to white people. He faced many challenges in life, but chose not to let them define him nor determine his future. He is a perfect example of how working hard and never giving up will always bear fruit. Above all, Guka loved his family. He was an amazing grandfather and I was truly blessed to have him in my life. Be strong is a phrase he would always tell me as I walk through challenges in life. Guka, even as I process the fact that you are gone, your love for me will always be a source of strength and encouragement through it all. I love you and you will always be in my heart till we meet again.
My name is Alison Karyuki and um, I decided to say a poem that I came across. Um, I felt it best describes Bukar's character as he had a strong personality and was very driven in life. And I believe we can all learn something from such an inspiring man. And it goes like this. I am strong. I can overcome any obstacles. Once I put my mind to it, I am a fighter. When someone pushes me down, not only physically, but mentally and psychologically, I will pull myself up and say, nice try, but it's going to take a lot more than gravity to keep me down, because I am a fighter. When you say, when you say I won't make it, it, only, it just encourages me to work harder. When you make fun of my flaws, I continue to embrace them. Nothing you say will bring me down. I am a fighter. My name is Jason Lawrence Ginyo Karyuki, and I wanted to give a speech, a uh, tribute to Guka. Guka, you lived a long life. Some say, some could say that you saw it all. From your early days, the hardships that you endured, to the later stages of your life, where your success could be seen by all. You're a fighter by nature, which is one of the things I admired strongly about you. One of your many triumphs I'd like to reflect on was in golf. You're one of the founding fathers, not of golf just in the country, but you created a movement across the whole of Africa, allowing Africans and Asians to play the sport. Your skills in the sport took you to many places across the world, and you interacted with different people from different parts of the globe. That I've learned, and you told me, is a very important thing that you must seek in life. You're keen on me connecting my roots, and I can say now more than ever that I'm committed and I will like you. You've taught me many lessons in life and have continuously been supporting me. And that is, and there is one promise that I can make here today, is that your legacy will live on for many decades to come. The following tribute is a tribute from a former business partner of Gukaz, David Ball, who is in the United Kingdom. Lawrence was a de delightful, generous, kind, and great friend. I admired his business acumen, his energy, his sense of humor, his greatness, and his hospitality. One of the great men of post-colonial Kenya, and he, had, and he worked hard for a good government and ethical business in Kenya. We will miss him greatly. May his soul rest in peace in the ever-loving arms of Jesus. Much love to the family. My name is Imani Bakita Madoni Kiraku, and I'd like to share my tribute to my grandfather. Dear Guka, you are truly one of a kind. Your ability to envision a dream and make it a reality is greatly reflected in all aspects of your life, and it has had an impact on mine. I remember you for being one of the very few people who encouraged and supported me when I moved to China for my high school diploma. As everyone else questioned and still asks to this day why on earth I would move to China at the age of 16. I am extremely grateful as that has been one of the greatest decisions of my life. Thank you for believing in me and my capabilities while encouraging me to be the best I can be. I've had the privilege to be inspired by your strength and resilience for the past 18 years. Your wise words will never be forgotten and I promise to uphold your legacy in everything I do till we meet again. My name is Christian Gino Masharia. I'm gonna respond. I'm gonna represent to you my Guka. Guka, we love you. Guka, anytime we met, you had the warmest smile, telling me I'm home. Then you proudly called me Gino, and my brother Nathan, and asked, "How are you?" I love sitting at the patio and sharing many my many stories about planes with you, Shoshu. You sat and listened to all I had to say. Nathan and I prayed for Kuka as you are unwell and will continue praying for you. We love you. Rest in peace with the angels, Kuka. Thank you so much. Today and John and I, 
I love this story now. Uh, and now, welcome. <laughs> My name is Zaria Wangari, and I'm going to present a tribute to my Guka. My dearest Guka, for the past 22 years, you've been a father figure in my life, clearly a man I will never forget. Many memories run through my mind just thinking about you, from eating supper together as we severed and discussed the food, to welcoming you home every day with a song. I'm so grateful that I got to share these times with you, that you loved me as much as you did. I really miss you. I love you, Kuka. Fly high with the angels. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Are we remaining there? Yeah. Okay. Moriega. I'm Jambo. Yes. I'm Kevin Wambogo Kibe. I have lost my political mentor. The people who knew me, I used to go to his place every Sunday after reading the Sunday Nation. I go to him and He's a great politician. Could you teach me to be like him? And I can tell I will teach you the right way to do politics. He used to teach me every single thing. I used to campaign with him. I used to have a great, great conversation with him. I promised him that one day, because I love country, I will join politics like him. So, mimi ndiye mwana siyasa huku. Mimi beachua. I feel sad he'll not be there. Once I say, once I become a member of parliament, now you are now my political grandfather. Kuwa na mimi, Vuka, rest well. Sita ongea mingi, mnajua di kiongea, dita ongea mambo ya BBI. So, so rest well, sir. Ah. Uh. I want to take this opportunity to thank all the grandchildren. They have done very well. We are proud of them. And we have also seen in them a future political leader who is seeking assistance from Honorable Raila Molo Dinga. He wants, to become, he, wants to, he wants you to become his grandfather in politics. Now I'd like to take this opportunity and welcome my brother Mike, who is going to take charge of the remaining items of agenda. And as he comes, I would also like to convey my condolences on behalf of the Mbari Ikonya clan. The deceased Lawrence Nginyo Karioki is a step brother, is a step brother to my father. And we have always been visiting him alongside my step brothers here whenever we needed help, whenever we needed guidance, and we feel that really we have lost the greatest icon of the Mbari Ikonya clan. We will miss him, we will remember him on his many other things, even what is being said here that he used to tell us not to drink a lot. There is one drink he never used to like. The small bottles which lie on the table. He says, do not take those ones. And if you want to drink, you drink when we are seeing you. And then don't go to drink in a private way. So thank you very much each and everybody here assembled. And we hope that we shall be meeting again in better circumstances. Welcome, Mike. Asante sana. Naomba tumpungeze ndugu yangu ndungu. Ame tuungoza vizuri. Ni chukue furusa hii kwa niyamba yangu binafsi kutuwa rambi rambi. Na nikaribisha viongozi wote ambuwa metunukiwa nyathu mbali mbali za uongozi. Niombe kwa heshma. Uh, tulikuwa tumkabidhi padri saa sita kamili na naona tumechelewa 
na nafasi hii nitaitoa kwa ajili ya viongozi wetu ambao wametunukiwa nyatho mbalimbali za uongozi niombe tu kwa heshima tutoe rambi rambi zetu kwa kifupi ili tuweze kuwa na nafasi ya ibada ya misa na niombe kwa sababu ya wakati huo ni mwalike governor wetu mheshimiwa nyoro ndiye atakaye tuongoza kipindi hicho na wale tutapewa nafasi tafadhali tuti ukipewa dakika mbili tuwe watiifu ili tuweze kusema sote karibu sana bwana governor Asante sana Mama Kariuki and the family uh, the clergy uh, our bishop our bishop Kibarabara and the elders the right honorable Raila Moro Odinga our former prime minister um, our former vice president Usari Mudavadi uh, Senator Gideon Moy, Senator and Chair of Kanu, uh, our Senator Kimanua Matangi, uh, Minority Leader of the Senate, Jim Sorengo, uh, Honorable Members of Parliament led by uh, the area MP, Honorable uh, Mwadi, our County uh, uh, Member of Parliament, or Women Lab, Mushomba and Pharaoh Munas, mine is going to be very short. As we have been told, uh, we just have a few minutes. So I will give this opportunity to just a few uh, political leaders. And then eventually I will invite, before I invite um, the a person to uh, pass the president message. I will invite the right honorable uh, Raila Omoro Odinga to uh, send his condolences, and then I will invite honorable uh, Paul Kehara to read the president's message. And therefore, we are going to be very short, and I will start by inviting honorable Mwadi, who is a member of parliament for this area, uh, to j just pass his mes message of condolence and introduce us to other members of parliament who are here. Honorable Mwadi. Uh, Asante sana, Bana Governor, uh, Familia ya Lawrence. Uh, pamoja na wote ambao wanatuongoza katika ibada hili all the priests uh, present uh, right honorable Raila Molo Odinga and because of time all my fellow leaders protocols observed am um, uh, mine is simple nipatiane risara za rambi lambi kwa familia najua tulikuwa nanyi uh, Jumapili iliyopita na nikaja nikawafariji lakini pia leo kwa uh, while we are escorting our fallen hero and having uh, been my mentor you would wonder how <laughs> because when I was trying to get in here he told me it is hard it is difficult it is murky but you are equal to the task not many words but it encouraged me and uh, to the family Nepoleni Sana. I also would want to take this opportunity to introduce my fellow members of parliament. Tutanza na wale ambao walikuwa mbeleni. Unajua mimi nilikuwa nikakuwa sikuwa alafu nikakuwa. So tuanze wale ha, walikuwa mbeleni. Tafadhali msimame. Former members of parliament. Yes. We have uh, Honorable Dennis Waveru from Dagureti Asante, Honorable Ndolo Asante Sana, he was ahead of me. We have Honorable Kirago, Ambaya Likua Menifanya Nisikue, Karibu. I love to know Honorable Kabando Wakabando Asante, and Honorable Joyce Lee, yes. And because I hope you are 
Mwangaza sioni vizuri. Joyce Lee asante sana kutoka upande wa coast. Alafu pia wale ambao wamefika leo na sitting members of parliament please be upstanding. Let me appreciate you and we thank you very much uh, for coming to condole with us. Uh, we have with us uh, Madam Naisula Lesuda. Pigie makofi. Mweshimiwa Mweshimiwa Koinange. Asante sana. Achomeka najua kidogo pande ile ingine mweshimiwa. Musimba, yes. From all the way from Cumberland and Sabina. Yes, I know her kama hana iyo kitu wamevako. Iyo wamevako. Asante sana Sabina kutoka Muranga. Yes, and we have MK Moses Kudia. Asante sana karibuni. So kwa niaba ya wabunge wote familia tafadhali mkubale zara zao za Rambirambi nimeambiwa kwa sababu ya muda vile umeoyoma hatutaweza ongea wote. Kwa hivyo wenzangu mabunge tafadhali muridhike tu hivi lakini tumeshukuru kwa sababu mmefika. ya pili ni sema ya kwamba kuna mambo ambayo nimeona tumesoma katika historia ya kiongozi ambaye ametuaga Lawrence ya kwamba yeye alikuwa ni mtu wa familia ni mtu alikuwa anajua familia ni kusema nini kwa hivyo sisi wenyewe twasoma leo ya kwamba tunatakiwa tujue familia ni kusema nini kama ulikuwa bado hujajua tafadhali it is time to know ya pili ni kwamba tunaweza kuwa na lengo na tukatimiza ambao tunaweza tunataka kufanya meaning whatever it is that he wanted to do he was very focused and determined and that is an encouragement for us who are still walking this journey and finally that he was seriously principled in politics nasikia yeye hakuwa anapeana 200 eh wanasiasa he never used to like any influence ya pesa ati ndio apate kura probably because of his principles siju kwa nini akupata kiti labda ni hiyo but i think it is very important but the greatest of them all is that he abhorred corruption mesoma nikasikia kwamba yeye hakuwa anataka mambo ya ufisadi and that is the same same tone which comes with uh, our leader his excellency uhuru moigai kinyata so for those we won't talk about bbi but for those who know about uh, uh, the provisions of the bbi one of the key issues is to fight against corruption even as we work for the prosperity of this nation and i think as leaders we can learn that you can get to where he was you can get to even higher heights without going through that vice called corruption kwa hivyo asanteni sana nataka kufikisha hapo naona governor anataka kunisukuma kidogo na niseme kwa wote ambao tumekuja tumepoteza kiongozi shujaa another great kenyan may his soul rest in eternal peace amen Thank you thank you very much uh, honorable Mwadi. Um I will break protocol a bit because if I don't do this I'm going to I'm going to be impeached by inviting the speaker of the Nation, of the county assembly of Kiambu so that he can only say a word and introduce to us our member of the county assembly you know how important it is to recognize those people please <laughs> It is very bad to have a tag of uh, and fear that you're going to impeach <laughs> anybody, but if you kija line in Baya, chunga sana usiwe impeached. But I want to start here on behalf of the members of the County Assembly of Kiambu, and uh, if they are here, I would like to ask them to be upstanding so that we appreciate them. <clears throat> members of the County Assembly, yes, here we have got Honorable Ikonya, who is a member of the family. Honorable Ikonya, the member for Kiabu Town. And we have Honorable Gitau Kagwe, the member for Gidunguri. And we also have uh, the Honorable <clears throat> Mudondu Kabau, the member for Kihara. I don't know whether there is any other member, but on behalf of all of them, and on behalf of myself and the entire assembly, I would like to convey a message of condolence to the family relatives and friends of our late 
fallen leader, Mweshimuwa Ginyo Karioki. I don't want to say much, but Governor, I just want to say one word that uh, I learned from this man way back in 1991. Or 1990 when we were fighting for a multi-party. We had one party, strong party called Ford. And we were all in Ford. And then katikati ya hiyo Ford ikasabaratika. And we all got divided. Kiambu and Muranga became Ford Asiri. And then there was Ford Kenya. And then Muzenginyo remained in Ford Kenya. And he was my good friend. So I went to see him, even to his house, and mom is here to be a mere witness. And I was telling him that now this place is for Dasili. And if you remain in Fort Kenya, my friend, you are going to miss parliament. And I saw a man who is determined to stand by his virtue and his uh, conviction. And Ginyo completely refused to leave Fort Kenya. And I would tell him, let us four first go to parliament, and when we go to parliament, we shall forget about these parties. And he completely refused. And later on, another man came in the name of Kamau Charia and joined for the city. And when the elections came, it was Icharia who was elected. I also remember going to uh, Jenga Karume, who was in DP, and told him, Mweshmua, um, I think Kiambu here is about for the city. And Karume also refused. And I used to say to do this because I was the organizing secretary of Ford and then for the city. I want to say that later on, I came to realize that this is a man who means what he says. And eventually when we went to parliament, and I was telling him, I wish you came to parliament because after we went to parliament, we forgot about the Fords and the Asilis and the Ford Kenyans, and we became one, one. Uh, with Jim Morengo there, with Raira Odinga, with Mzee Jaramogu Wiga Odinga, with uh, Martin Shikuku, and all those that won in the first multi-party election. I can assure you that we all forgot about our parties and we became one strong team of the opposition. Let alone, as I finish, uh, these parties that we all uh, clamor for, Kube, Nidaraja, na Magali, Kutufukisha, Bunge. So I remember Nikimaliza, the former President Daniel Ramoy, Akisema, each of my Takwisha, Lakini Kano, Itatawara, 100 years. I have witnessed all our parties going, come for the Syria Kuna, eh? for the Kenya Iku Kido Kidogo, DP, Skis, Kuizi, PNU, Akuna, TNA, Akuna, Naida Zote, so Gideon Moy, Chunga Sana Ichama, Abamayako, Alisema, Tingiza Tatawara, Miyaka, Miyamoji. So I don't know whether that will be a, a prophecy coming to fulfillment, but I want to say that we have lost a man who was a great man in this country of Kiambu and who stood for the truth. Finally, Your Excellency, Governor, you know, you have asked me that we de design something we are calling Kiabu uh, uh, Leaders Summit. We want to bring all Kiabu leaders together through the leadership of the, the Governor. And he has said it is time now that Kiabu leaders, you are going to sit together and there shall be no fight again. There shall be no fighting in this country again. And things shall be different from now. Enough is enough. Because time is of essence, and we must deliver to our people who have elected us. And if Ginyo Karyuki, the Honorable uh, Lawrence, uh, and I have known his other Christian name is Thomas, if he was alive, I'm sure, Your Excellency, he could have been in that summit guiding us. So my friend Lawrence, Thomas, Ginyo Karyuki, rest in peace until we meet again that wonderful morning when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes back for all of us, and then we shall live forever and ever in a land where there shall be no more death. May God bless you all. Thank you. Amen, amen, and hallelujah. Uh, let us now call our county member of parliament, who is our women rep, Mushomba, for uh, her message and to introduce us to other uh, county MPs who are here. Please, one minute. Asante sana, Your Excellency Governor, familia ya Baba Ginyo Karioki, viongozi ambao wako hapa, wakiongozo wa mweshimi wa Raila Odinga, Gideon Moy, Musale Mudavadi, all protocol observed. The members of the clergy, 
na wakristiano wote. Bwana asifiwe. Amina. Mimi nimekuja hapa kuomboleza na kumpatia my last honor to a man that I really respected. I worked with the, the late Ginyo Karioki in the year 2003 and I realized that he's a man who had the very low downtrodden Kenyans at heart. He had started a network called Mapeso, Maendeleo Poverty Eradication Society. Na alikuwa natupatia begu za terere, tuende tukapande kule kwa wale ambao wananja. As you may all know, through his businesses, he had invested very heavily in Makuyu, Muranga County. Na huko diko mimi nilikuwa nikika nikiwa a teenage girl. Na alinitumia sana kwenda kwa wamama mashinani kupanda terere. That is when I knew that this man had a space for the poor, the hungry, and the downtrodden. When I started my political career, I looked for Mweze Ginyo. Tukakunywa chai na yeye pale boulevard na tukaongea sana. Akaniambia kama utafanya ile kazi ulikuwa nafanya ya kusaidia maskini, mimi nitakushikilia. And for sure, during campaigns, I even came to his house. He really supported me. Juzi tu wakati tumekuwa na hii handshake kati ya Uhuru Kenyatta na Raila Odinga. After the handshake, nilitafuta baba ginyo kwa simu. Nikamwambia baba umeona vile kumeendelea. Raila Odinga na Uhuru Kenyatta wamesalimiana. Unaonaji, twende wapi? Tuifuate, tusiifuate. Akaniambia, iyo imesalimiana, wamesalimiana ni mzuri sana. Lakini wewe kwa sababu we ni mwerevu wewe. Angalia wale ambao wako hapo ndani ya iyo handshake. Akaniuliza, unaona Gideon Moi kwa iyo handshake? Nikamuambia ndio. Akaniambia kama Gideon Moi yako kwa hiyo handshake, basi, hata wewe fuata. Kwa hivyo Gideon Moi, ujue sisi tumepatiwa ujumbe, sasa tunakuangalia. Jogo yaze kuwika, ikiwika, sisi tutakufuata. Asanteni sana na mungu wabariki and my sincere condolences. Sante sana mweshmiwe wa mwishomba. Uh, wacha sasa ni mwalike wa senator, senator Kimani wa Matangi, to pass his message of condolence and introduce to us the fellow senators uh, who are here. Uh, Mama Karioki, familia yote ya mze aliyetuaga mze nginyo, kanisa letu tukengoza na Father, Father Ndicho, Archbishop wetu, viongozi wote ambao siku ya leo tuko hapa tukimzindikisha huyu kiongozi tukiongozi wa naye former prime minister Raila Amolo Odinga anayejulikana sana kama baba viongozi wengine Salim Davadi Gideon Moi James Orengo mwenzangu Na nyinyi viongozi wote ambao tulioko hapa kutoka Kiambu na Wakristo wote God is good and all the time ebu tusalimiane kidogo tu najua kwa vile tuko na huzuni kwa kuachwa na kiongozi kama kama huyu lakini pia ni vizuri wakati tumekuja hapa kumomboleza na pia kumzindikisha kutambua ya kwamba maisha yake ile ameishi ni maisha ya kuigwa and just a few things i would want to say especially to the family as we condole and eulogize him is that this man has lived and lived and left a life with such a rich legacy that as we condole him would be more of celebrating his achievements 
and the footprints he has left. And as I say those two things, I want to remember uniquely. And Governor will not belong, belong in the two things I want to say. Although the wise men of old said that you don't bury a hero in a hurry. Or not belong. And when I, when I was growing up, I grew up in uh, that village called Dumberi as a very young man. And uh, when I was listening to the gophers, a few questions that I had when I was a young man I answered this morning. Because I was ask, asking myself, how on earth do we find a golf course and a golf club in the middle of a village in Kiambu where when you hit a golf, a golf ball, it lands in somebody's house? Now, now that could only be done by Nginyo Karaoke. Two, Nginyo Karaoke the late is a man that I respect uniquely and whom we have a unique relationship. In the year 2013, when I was running for senator for Kiambu County, uh, we contested together. He was my competitor for the position of senator. And you can imagine, at that time, he had just bequeathed his party to the president, TNA. And I was supposed to join his party and compete with him for that position. Uh, but I want to remember all the time that the uniqueness that I will remember him for is the humility with which he handled the entire process. And I remember the day when we counted the votes in Kiambu. And obviously, I emerged the winner. He was extremely magnanimous in congratulating me, wishing me well, and supporting me up to this day. Lastly, I observed when he was renewing and refurbishing his hotel. And I asked myself, because I'm keen in construction, I asked myself, who is this genius who have brought down a whole building, he's put up bare uh, straps of metal, and then within three weeks, you have a whole big, bright new hotel. And that was Genyo Karyuki for you. So I want to say that this is a man that is worth emulating, he's worth uh, respecting. May God rest his soul in eternal peace. Sisi kama watu wa kiambu, tutasema tume mpoteza mmoja wetu ambaye tunafaa kumuiga. Ototo ni waulize kwa vile siku hizi kama viongozi. Wengi wetu tumekuwa na mfano mbaya wa kuonesha watoto badala ya kufanya ile kazi iliyofanywa na nginyo ya kukazana, ya, ku, ya, ya, ya kujaribu, ya kusukumana na dunia na kujipatia kile unachopata kwa haki. Sisi tumekuwa watu kwa, wa kutafuta shortcut. Na ningependa kuambia watoto ambao wamesimama hapa wakimuimbia na kumwambia tribute zao fuateni nyayo za huyu mzee. Kwa vile vile mmesikia mwenye kazi ya nyayo sasa ako hapa Gideon Moy, viongozi wengine tuige hiyo. Mungu awabariki na watende vyema. Asanteni. Sante sana uh, seneta wetu. Uh, sasa tunakaribia uh, kukamilisha. Ningetaka wakati huu kumuita seneta James Orengo aseme jambo moja ili tuendelee kama tunamaliza seneta minority leader kwa senate uh, James Orengo. Thank you uh, to the Nginyo Kariki family, uh, including the widow, and my friends in the family, Jane Kiragu, uh, Anthony. I want, on behalf of my family, and uh, my family is a friend to, the, to this family. My wife, Betty, is sitting there, out, somewhere out there. And uh, on behalf of the people of Siaya, and my colleagues in the Senate, although Wamatangi has also already spoken as one of the senators here, Your Excellency, the Right Honorable Raela Molodinga, the Cabinet Secretaries who are here, members of Parliament, and His Excellency, the Governor of Kiambu. I'd be very brief. 
some of us have been friends of Mgenyo Karigi for a very long time. And we have come to his home many, many, many times. There were times that to get even a venue to our political leaders to meet. And when those political leaders were Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, Matiba, uh, be it uh, Martin Shikuku, sometime you try to secure a venue in, in Nairobi. At that time, it was impossible. Uh, or if you got it, uh, sometimes there would be interference uh, by the state or other people who didn't like the advent of multipartism. Nginyo Karigi would offer his home, he would offer his premises, including the office and his hotels. And uh, one of the things that has been very persistent, even at the very last days of his life, is trying to bring people together. And uh, many people, even in his last days, were coming here uh, to talk to him. Uh, I know Musalia has been here. Uh, we're here with uh, Raila Molodinga together with other leaders. And his message all the time was how to bring the, the country together. When Ford was uh, having divisions and problems internally, Nguyenyo really tried to bring the leaders uh, together. And there was a phase of in, his, in his life when he really tried as a first step towards creating unity in the country to create unity and harmony between the Kikuyu community and the Luo community. And many, many times, Luo leaders and elders would come to his home here. He would come to Bondo in trying to build some synergy in order to propel Kenya to be one people and one nation. And therefore, the only thing that I can say as a, a last word during this time of mourning, uh, when we are sending this great man to be with his maker, is that historically nations rarely get moments like we have today in the country, where the leadership can come together and talk together and reason together. Those occasions when they present themselves to nations, you can grab them or abandon them. And uh, the example that we've been given with uh, the, His Excellency, the President of Uru Kenyatta, and Riot, Riot Honorable Raila Molodinga, to bring Kenyans in one tent, I think this is what Nginyo Kariki desired in his life, that we should be in one tent. We may be different people, different experiences, different cultures, but in this melting point called Kenya, this tent, we can be able to propel this country to greater heights. And therefore, I hope, as we are talking about the agenda that is confronting the nation, that hopes to bring us together, we can come and reason together. I'm asking Korea, who is my friend, the member for Gatundu, this is a time that we can have a conversation together. In the spirit of Nginyo Kariki, that fish that we're eating, which he had not finished, let us eat that fish, and then you invite me for Nyamachoma to talk about Kenya and what is good uh, for Kenya. <laughs> Otherwise, if we continue to make noise and calling each other names, uh, we, are not, we are not going to look like sane people anymore. Even kids don't call each other names like we politicians call each other names. Uh, and I think it's getting to levels which, uh, which is getting a, a bit like theater, a bit ludicrous. Uh, so let's live up to the spirit of this great man and bring Kenya together. And I know it can be done. And it can be done this year, not next year. So that we can talk about jobs, we can talk about unemployment, and we can talk about poverty. If we don't do it, then we cannot talk together to bring greatness to this country. Asante sana, and may his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Orengo. Uh, let's move on now to 
uh, Senator Gideon Boy, uh, the chairman of KANU, to pass his mes message of condolence. Um, the family of the late Ginyo Karaoke, Your Excellency the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, the CS is present here today, Your Excellency the Governor, my colleagues in the Senate and in the National Assembly, party leaders here, Martha Karua is present with us, Musalia Mudavadi. All distinguished guests, the clergy, Yango Aitakwa Mengi. Ukiniona hapa, pengine wengine wanasema pengine Gideon amepotea njia. Atujia muona hapa wakati kingine. Niko hapa kwa sababu ya rafiki yango moja kijana ya marehemu ambayo anaitwa James Anthony Karaoke. Kwa wakati huu sisi kwa kimila ya Kalenjin wakati umepata msiba tunakaanga nyumbani siku 40. Lakini James Anthony Karaoke na familia ya Ginyo wakati tulipata msiba ndio hawa hasa yeye alikuja kunisaidia akanisaidia paka wakati tukapunzisha mzee wetu na wakati tulisikia kwamba yeye alipoteza mzee wake familia yangu wote walisema waacha kila kitu ambao unafanya shika baskili ya mzee kimbia paka hapa ni muru ndio hiyo naona nimefika kutoka bonde la ufa kusema pole ndugu yangu pole pole it was through james na familia na ile urafiki ambayo tulikuwa nayo ndio nikajua marehemu and been running for many years na ile kitu ambayo nili niliona kwa marehemu is one or two attributes ambayo ningependa niseme kwa saa machache ya kwanza mheshimiwa member of parliament maeda alisema huyu mzee hakupenda ufisadi he was a self made man yale yote ambayo alipata he did it by sheer hard work determination conviction and a sense of purpose those are the values which we should all be selling or telling or mimicking to the next generation coming ya pili ni upendo ambao alikuwa nayo na familia the times i used to come to visit him here <laughs> kwa breakfast nilikuwa nilishanga kwa sababu huko kwetu breakfast ni kitu kingine hapa nilikafundishwa kitu naitwa duma <laughs> so alikuwa anapatiaga sisi duma na mawaidha na tulikuwa na cheka na tunafurai so as i conclude the gentleman who is here today i was proud and privileged to have known him secondly for me he was a, a golf legend an astute businessman and a tactical politician nani kimaliza kanuiko It was it is and it will always be. Wacha tumalize kazi, tumalize eh msiba ile yetu na ya familia. Bas tutabaida kala tukanyange nchi vizuri. 
Mwenyezi Mungu awabariki. Asanteni. Asante sana um, Senator Gideon Moy. Sasa kama vile nimesema tunakaribia kumaliza. Ningetaka I know we have two cabinet secretaries. Uh, let me invite cabinet secretary Eugene uh, to uh, pass his condolences. Mnamuona kwa hiyo kitabu and introduce to us other members of our officials from the national government. My brother uh, Your Excellency Raila Molo Odinga, the second Prime Minister of Kenya. Your Excellency Msaliam Davadi, the seventh Vice President of Kenya. Excellency Governor Nyoro, na viongozi wote wa Kiambu County, Senators Walio Hapa, Members of Parliament, Speaker Ndishu na Speaker Elachi, the family, our friend Ginyo Kariuki. Please accept our deepest condolences. I am here with two colleagues from Cabinet. Uh, the Honorable the Attorney General will be delivering His Excellency the President's uh, message, but I'm also here with my brother, C.S. James Masharia. But probably before I give him a minute to say one word, I just want to say that I bring condolences to the family of Mze Lawrence Nginyo Kariuki from my family. We have been family friends for many years, and I knew him way back in 1991, 1992, when we were all in Ford, Kenya, at the advent of multi-party uh, democracy. Nginyo was very, very close to the late Mzee Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, who was then the party leader of Ford, Kenya, and my late brother, Wamalo Kijana, who was the vice chair of Ford, Kenya. I got to know him when I was serving as a young lawyer in the farm of James Agribo Borengo on fifth floor Ajib House. He used to come to the office to consult with the right honorable Borello Dinga, James Orengo, my late brother. And that is when I knew him as a politician. Later on, I also came to know him as a fellow Catholic. We shared faith. And as friends, he invited me here many times during fundraisings, during development of uh, our church here. And also, I came to know him as a golfer. When we were asked to stand as golfers, Governor Nyoro was asking me, Eugene, I didn't know you're also a golfer. But may I say that Mze Nginyo, together with uh, uh, Mze Muskari Kombo, are the ones who introduced me to golf just recently. So I'm not an avid golfer like Mze. And uh, he kept asking me whether I've uh, uh, gotten a handicap. And I'm sorry to say, Mze, you have left me before I got a handicap. <laughs> but I promise you I'm going to work very hard to ensure that uh, before the end of the year I do. But I knew him mostly as a leader who believed in the unity of this country. And after Fort Kenya, when my late brother passed on, I came to know him even more closely towards the election of 2012-2013, when he worked closely with our president and he surrendered his party. Many people might not know that TNA, when we launched that party with His Excellency the President, it's Muzein Ginyo Kariuki who actually facilitated when the president left Chama Baba na Mama and launched a new party called TNA, the National Alliance Party. It's Muzein Ginyo who actually encouraged him, supported him, and we launched that party together. But one thing he asked us, he believed in two things, the unity of one indivisible nation called Kenya. He believed in a Kenya that is free of corruption and tribalism. And he asked us, are these the things you stand for? And those of you who remember the president when he made his speech as we launched TNA, he swore to fight for two things, to rid Kenya of corruption and to unite this country. As Mze Nginyo leaves us today, I'm sure he's very proud of our president because he has kept the faith and his commitment towards fighting corruption, 
the resolve has only gotten stronger and so has the commitment. His resolve to unite this country, we have seen as Mze leaves us through the handshake with the Right Honorable Raila Odinga. Our president resolve grows stronger every day to unite our country. And I dare ask you today that the greatest honor that we can give Mze is to support His Excellency the President, to continue the journey he embarked on with Nguinyo Karaoke as we launched TNA, to unite this country, to build bridges of friendship and brotherhood across regions, across religions. I think that is the greatest honor we can give Mze. And may I ask my colleague, C.S. Masharia, to also come and condole with the family. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my fellow CS, uh, Eugene Omarwa, uh, the clergy, the family of Muse, leaders uh, present, led by former Prime Minister, Excellency Laida Odinga, and all the leaders here present. I'm here in my personal capacity, but also as a government official. I knew Muse mainly through uh, James Anthony, who has been mentioned here. And because of James, I feel that I knew Muse very well. Because one of the attributes of James and the family is very strong discipline. I've played golf with James. I don't know whether you remember, once we played at Royal, and I knew that indeed James, and of course Muse, who was a gopher himself, are uh, people of serious, serious discipline. The second like, thing I'd like to say is that um, the family has taken care of Muse in a very big way. And we feel very proud about it. James Anthony, we used to meet at Aga Khan Hospital. And I know the family has done all they had to do to take care of Muse. That gave us a lot of proud, pride as friends of the family. And I know you've done all you could do to make sure that Muse's final days were days of comfort. The final thing I'd like to say is that Muse loved unity. Unity of our country, but also unity of our region. And unity comes with development. And that's why whatever Muse did, was based on development. And while studying here, let me tell you, our fellow Munas from this region, that we feel that we have done what we had to do to make sure that Muse's legacy of development will be remembered. People have waited for some roads to be done in this region. Since 1963, you remember, when we had freedom fighters from side of Kiambu all the way to Nyeri. They used to go alongside Abadea Mountains, along cattle tracks, and through the permission of the president, now we are doing those cattle tracks, transforming them to become proper roads in the name of Mau Mau Roads. You are aware that very soon the president will be launching Route 1, Lot 2, Lot 3, all the way to Nyeri. Lot 1, you start around here, a place called Gataka. Going through Kamahedo, all the way to Moranga, Kenyona, all the way to Ihororo, Nyeri. In remembrance of the people who sacrificed their lives for our freedom. And I believe Muse, where he's sleeping today, he'll be proud of what the president is doing to remember those freedom fighters. That road around from here, Kataka, to Ihororo, will cost us about 8.8 .8 billion shillings, a length of 216 kilometers. And so, as Muzea goes, is something which I believe we shall remember. And then, uh, finally, before I sit down, coming from town, you've seen we've come on a fairly smooth road, which was never there before. I think this is a legacy of people like Muse, who was always preaching development, development, development. 
And so, let me say to the family, we are with you, and we wish Muse a happy place in heaven. Before I sit down, let me also recognize some of the other members of government who are here. We have Eugenia Jeroge, Energy, over there. We have another PS, Irungu Airago of Water. And we do have Controller of State House with us this, this afternoon. Asante Nisana, and God bless you. Thank you very much, Waziri. Uh, we have two uh, messages of condolence. One from the former U.S. Ambassador. I'm told it's going to be read by Mr. Biule. Uh, followed by another one from the Ambassador of Germany, Her Excellency Anne Gunther. So, uh, Biule, uh, please come and lead that message of condolence. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon to the family of uh, Lawrence Kariuki. You've heard my name is Bill Lay. I'm a friend of the family. I'm here today to read a message of condolence from former U.S. Ambassador Michael Rannenberger. And let me read it to you now. I was deeply saddened to learn of the death of Lawrence. During my time as the U.S. Ambassador in Kenya, I had the privilege of getting to know him well. He often extended warm hospitality, <clears throat> which made me feel at home. I learned a great deal from him about the history and culture of Kenya, in which he played a significant role, including as a champion, as we've heard, of multi-party democracy. He was truly a force of nature, and I was inspired by his energy, his enthusiasm for life, his desire to work for the well-being of his country. I have lost a friend and a kindred spirit. Please accept my profound condolences. My thoughts and prayers are with you at this most, most difficult time. Sincerely, Ambassador Michael Ranneberger. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bill. And now, Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Germany. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Greetings to all of you. Viogosi, Nalidas, Namabini, Namabwana, Excellency, former Prime Minister, uh, dear CSs, dear members of parliament, dear senators, MCAs, the governor, all protocol observed. But let me send some uh, special greetings uh, to Mama Margaret and to um, James Anthony and the other children and the family members and thanking them for having invited me. I'm very moved because I don't know how I deserve this honor to speak about the deceased. I met him only once, very briefly, which is not too long ago, on the 28th of December. And I didn't know that he was so sick, but he insisted on having this meeting. And it was a wonderful afternoon. And just from that one encounter with the family and this personality, you could see from the warmth of the house, the welcome, you could see what a wonderful person he must have been. What a wonderful husband, what a wonderful father. I cannot judge all I know about him. I have heard and I have read in the newspapers and people have told me. But I can tell you this one encounter convinced me that he must, must have been a very wonderful person. And, but what I know about him, and that was what our meeting was all about, he was very passionate about um, the Kiambu Institute of Science and Technology, and that's what we wanted to talk about. Um, he was very passionate about the youth, about giving them 
um, a future, a good education. And I think he helped us a lot because uh, Germany is, is very engaged in this area and we want to make this institute, but also other institutes in the country, into centers of excellence. And I think um, uh, Lawrence uh, must have seen us, how we uh, inaugurated uh, last Tuesday together with His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, and together with the federal president of uh, Germany. They together inaugurated a center of excellence uh, for TVET uh, at the Kiambo Institute. So I think uh, he's very proud of us. And, um, and I think we owe it to him to, uh, to continue his passion and to continue his dream. We are here now to, to make this come true, to fulfill this and to work in, in, his, in his spirit and, and, uh, and keep, keep continuing the way that he has actually paved for us uh, doing this. So um, he was a great man and um, he continues to be an inspiration for myself but I think for everybody else as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Annette. Um, uh, let me recognize a few other people who will not talk uh, because of time, and then I invite uh, the right honorable Raira Odinga. Uh, together with us, uh, we have uh, Honorable Mother Karoa, uh, who is there. Uh, there she is, I think she can wave to the crowd. Uh, we also have uh, the former uh, Governor of Kiambu, William Kavogo, is somewhere. In addition, uh, we have our elder there. Um, in addition, we have our elder, Honorable George Mohoho, who is seated there. Uh, we have our brother, uh, Mohoho Kenyatta, seated at the end. And now, let me invite uh, our former Vice President, uh, Honorable Musari Mudavadi, and the Chair of ANC to pass his message of condolence um, at this moment, my brother. Uh, thank you, Governor. Um, Madam Margaret Nginyo Karioki and your entire family, my friend Anthony being there, Governor, the Right Honorable Raila Molo Dinga, distinguished friends, relatives, mourners, and of course the church. Before I pay my final respects, allow me, Mama, to be a little bit unorthodox, including Governor. Because in Parliament, there's usually a palace where you say, I wish to cede a minute or two of my time to somebody else. And I think Honorable Martha Karua deserves that. <laughs> because she was very close to Nginyo in matters of multipartism. And I would like her to take a bit of my time. Thank you. <laughs> The family of the late Lawrence Ginyo Kariuki, the clergy, the Right Honorable uh, Retired Prime Minister, my colleagues Honorable Musalia, Honorable Senator Moy, all protocols observed. I just want to say one thing, that the late Ginyo Kariuki was a very principled man not just a principled politician, but principled in everything he did, and a fighter to the end. And I think a lot has been said, I need not go on and on. We are here to honor his memory, and the call is just to continue doing what, the things that he valued, leading this country to integrity, not just praising people for integrity, but being leaders and citizens of integrity and uniting. Uniting means accommodating other voices, even dissenting voices. Let us truly unite this country. May he 
rest in internal peace. And once again, thank you, Honorable Mudabadi, for sitting a minute. Thank you, Governor, Mama. First of all, condolences again to you and your entire family. Um, and I just wish to reiterate that apart from the politics, uh, Nguinho was indeed a very compassionate man. Somebody who even in his moment of pain, when he was ailing himself, he would still have time and an ear for other people who are also going through some difficulties. That was really commendable and unique. We have heard how he grew from very humble beginnings, committed to hard work, shunned corruption. And indeed, as much as he was compassionate, the reality is Nguinho also had a pinch of arrogance. And that pinch of arrogance was deserved because he had grown from very humble beginnings and it never got onto his head because he would still then remember that he had to work for the lesser uh, privileged people in society. And the times we came to see him, uh, Rengo referred to it, he, we would sit and one of his key questions was, what do you really want for this country? Everybody is allowed to be ambitious, and you can be ambitious. But what do you really want for this country? That was the fundamental question. And I think as we bid him farewell, that's the question we need to answer. Not about our individual ambitions, which Shakespeare called vaulting ambition. You sometimes have it so much, and when you try to board the horse or jump onto the horse, you end up finding yourself on the other side of the horse. So Nguinho was very clear. What is it that we had for this country in whatever we pursue? Finally, as a golfer, Nguinho, listening to him, he cautioned that uh, enjoy yourself, but don't overdo it. Those of you who are golfers, you know in a golf course, there are 18 holes. When you finish, there's usually the 19th, where you go and have your refreshments. But today, I want to ask, perhaps, when it means now resting somebody who's been a golfer, should we Christian that one, the 20th hole? Because on that hole, God allows you a single part. No matter where you stand, it is just one part. And that part is that we shall be seeing Guinho go to his maker. We all pray that when the time comes for us to be on the 20th hole, we shall also receive God's grace. Asante mama, asante con Guinho. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, let me also uh, take this opportunity on my own behalf, and on behalf of my family, and on behalf of all the people of Kiambu, uh, to send a message of condolence to the uh, Guinea family. Uh, this Muse was a leal son of soil. He was a leal patriot in Kiambu. I knew him before I joined politics. Uh, we used to meet at the Rena Mount. I used to talk about other things. I was not talking about politics then. And later on, he became my mentor in 2013, those of you who can remember, uh, after the birth of TNA. And immediately TNA was born. Um, there was a by-erection in Ikino, and we were supposed to deliver that seat, and that's how I met um, the Ginyo Karaoke in politics. I have to say that I have, I have been with him. We've discussed issues such as Kist. We've discussed issues such as Duberi. And I can tell you that this Mze lying here was really, really very passionate 
extremely passionate about transformational leadership in Kiambu. He was very, very concerned when it appeared like things were not going the right direction. And those of you who know him, he would call because he also believed in participatory leadership. He had this method of ensuring that he had 20 people in every ward. And he would say, things are not okay. So are we, can we call these 20 people in every ward? And you know, in Kiambu there are 60 wards, so you are talking about 240 uh, people. Because he felt that we needed participatory leadership and we needed to monitor what was happening from the, from the grassroots. So we've lost them there. Our legacy, just as the family who pushes legacy forward, our legacy in the uh, county is to ensure that we have that transformational, economic, social, and cultural uh, readership in this county. Uh, because that is what he would have wished to see. He would have wished to, he have, would have wished to see empowerment of our people. I want to say, he has talked to me several times about Duberi. Uh, the latest was probably about a month or two, uh, a month or a month and a half ago. And there were issues uh, surrounding Duberi. And I assured him that Duberi will never lose its face. Duberi will not be subdivided into a shopping center. And I want to consult with the leadership of uh, Duberi uh, so that we come out with a way forward for that particular uh, field. I know we've used it, we've turned, out, we've turned it into a political um, uh, uh, field. We are, we are going to move back to our Kirigiti because that is where our legacy, our, our legacy and historically our politics are. I'll be sitting together with the committee because it will be our proposal that we turn that Duberi ground where Mr. Guinho was the pirate chairman of the Gophers, starting from Akadi, that we would turn it into a multi-purpose park that would encompass the golfing and all other activities that are involved uh, right now in that particular field. So I'll be consulting with you. We will also be consulting uh, so that even, even as we take the challenge from Kenya Golf Union of looking for a county a golf club somewhere in Kiambu, we would be consulting with you, and if we agree, we will push it to our county assembly that we can rename Duberi, Duberi, Guinho uh, Park. Uh, but that I will leave to you, and then we'll push the idea to our county assembly to remember uh, this uh, patriot. Finally, I said uh, when I was there on Sunday with the family and uh, you know, the fellow mourners, I said that when the history of Kiambu is going to be written, it's going to be written soon, there will be a chapter on uh, this icon. We are putting together, we'll start putting together the makers of Kiambu. We've had makers of America, makers of Ta uh, Malaysia. We'll be putting together the makers of Kiambu because we want, we want to understand where we came from. We want to understand where we are and where we are going. So we'll be putting together uh, that, both in, in electronic and written form. We are engaging somebody to start to do that. We'll also be sitting together uh, with a committee uh, from Kiambu to start identifying and recognizing our eminent elders and our eminent persons. People who do not know who they are cannot know where they are going. So that's the kind of thing that we want to do so that we can recognize the role and the position that Mze has uh, taken in Kiambu County. So once again, uh, on my own behalf and on behalf of the county, we've roasted a great patriot. May God bless his soul in eternal peace. And with those few remarks, uh, let me take this opportunity to invite Right Honorable uh, Raira Moro Odinga, Your Excellency, to make your remarks. Mama Margaret and the children, the clergy, fellow mourners, Hamjambo. 
Mwadhani arogoshio. Uh, uh, yesu akumio. Um, let me first begin by bringing apologies from His Excellency the President. This funeral should have taken place tomorrow. The family requested and the President said he would come today. Unfortunately, because of visitations of coronavirus, some appointments were scheduled, and that's why he has not been able to make it today. So he has asked me to convey his apologies to the family. We have come to mourn a friend. Here uh, in, uh, in uh, Kiambu, you say, Urataguo Meruti, Meruti, that he served is he who serves. And that is Ginyo uh, Wakariuki, a great man, a man who is self made, who came from down and became what he is in life. If you talk about Hasla, Ginyo Karaoke is truly somebody who is out to be called a Hasla. Because look at where Nguyen came from and how he has been able to manage and reach where he's reached. I've been listening to those who have talked about Nguyen. Because Nguyen was so many things to different people. What they have not talked about Nguyen here, not talk about a gentleman like the English gentry, the man who loved style the way he dresses is all the time smart and clean. And he loved cleanliness. If you go to Linana Mount Hotel, which he built, it's all the time tidy and clean. And that was Gino taught many people, one of us. We've been friends for a long time. And we also met in politics. Zinguinho was a freedom fighter. And he had a subjugation. So even during those one party days, when the time came to change from single party to multi party at uh, uh, Kasarani Stadium, Nguyenyo is the one who is on record to have said that we should change, remove section 2A. And and to introduce multipartism back in our country. That is Nguyenyo Karaoke. Nguyenyo has also worked very hard to try to unite the people of Kenya. I remember him with Mzee Gitu Kahangiri coming all the way to Bondo. With the Kabando Kabando was there. And even uh, uh, Moses Kuria was also there. He <laughs> came to Bondo. And, and we really talked, and I tried to instill a lot of knowledge and discipline on Moses Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he's still a student, he's still learning. He's <laughs> learning. But we've done many things with Guinea from Ford days and Ford Kenya. We worked together with Guinea. Guinea has stood to, to go to Parliament several times. But each time he loses, he does not lose hope. And he's also never bitter at all. But again, you believe that if you bring unity among our people and remove tribalism, Kenya can thrive. And this is what we owe in Gino Karaoke. That we need to work to unite this country. This is a great country that does not deserve to play in the league in which it is playing. Kenya deserves to play in the Super League, not a Super League of corruption, a Super League in terms of development. And that is what the founding fathers talked about, playing to be found within our borders. And that is what has brought me and Uhuru Kenyatta together. 
that the meaning of the handshake and BBI, that we change course so that this country can be able to move forward and to develop much faster than has happened up to now. And we are not going to look back on this. We will not be distracted in terms of, oh, these are basically just self-serving people looking for self and so on. No. We want to ensure that tomorrow, a Kikuyu can go and work anywhere in the country and will be recognized as a Kenyan. <laughs> a Luo can come and live here in Kiambu and they will help work, marry, and be a Kenyan. The same thing with a Kalenjin, a Luhia, a Mujikenda, unity in diversity, not in words, but in deeds. Then we want also to ensure that when we go for elections, elections end on the day of the polling and we begin to do our work again thereafter. Thirdly, we want to deal with this cancer of corruption, not just in words, that you're walking around with sacks of money in terms of Arambis and investing in, 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 in heaven here on earth. We want you to invest here on earth for development, not for heaven, because we want to know that ultimately all of us will go to heaven. With those very remarks, we want to say, fare thee well, my friend. Eh? Um, I would say, come away, Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Prime Minister. And now, finally, I invite Honorable uh, Paul Kehara, our Attorney General, to read the President's message of condolence. Waiji. Mama Margaret. Margaret. Wangare, and the family of the late Honorable Lawrence Ginyawa Kariuki, Reverend Fathers, it is my privilege this afternoon and my duty to deliver the message of condolence of His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya. Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta. As His Excellency, the Prime Minister has said, it really, really, really was His Excellency, the President's wish to be here with you. We started with business as state house this morning. And even after the meetings, the president was even dressed to come to this function, to be with you and say farewell to his friend and brother. But sometimes matters of state can be difficult. And even for a president, there is only one president. And something did crop up which made it impossible, Mama Margaret, for your friend to be here with you. Na Ona munge no makara ndi inge muera ne ati akoha anire. But believe you me, it was important. But before I read this message, I have known Mzee Nginyo for many, many years. 
I have acted for him as a client when I practiced law at the bar. During those years that have been referred to of the multi party politics, when I was advising the Anglican Church and worked very closely with the leadership at that time, I consulted with him. He was a friend of our family. And even later in life, he would call me. And we would chat on the phone sometimes for over an hour. And I would call him. That very difficult time during the KIST, Kambu Institute, where my late father was a founder, trustee, this, this man gave me very, very wise counsel on how to deal with that very intricate problem. So I'm not a golfer. I am not a politician, but I have benefited from the wise counsel of a man that I have known to be thoroughly honest and sincere in his dealings. This is the message of condolence to the family, relatives and friends of the late Honorable Lawrence Ginyokariuki. It is with grief and a deep sense of loss that I send this message of condolence and encouragement following the death of the Honorable Lawrence Ginyokariuki. The Honorable Lawrence Ginyo's death has robbed us of a great leader, a prolific politician, and a multi-party crusader. Mze Nginyo was a man who was very, very close to me, and his departure has left a huge gap in my life. Since learning of his death, I have been reminiscing the wonderful times I had with him. I especially remember the many times I was with him, giving me and many others words of wisdom and encouragement on how to steer the affairs of life. Natondo kagutu e kamu shiega tiha kaguo mugeni. His Excellency the President asked me to emphasize to you, Mama Margaret and the family, ati ona mwa mwaga woko mude. Muete kia na mumenye kuma gatoro kangoro ya kehare hora gera. Atenea muende, atenea niangiendi le kukoruo guuku. Na asho kanjera, ate maundu marea, His Excellency meke tena mudhuri oyo. Gotire yuraga, hende akariga neruo. Kanariga neruo na inyue na mushi wanyo. Well, the Attorney General Paul Kihara, that is uh, representing, uh, or rather reading President Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, condolence message there, of course, uh, touching on uh, a few of uh, taking off also to uh, eulogize uh, the man in his own terms after. Members with trying to expound on uh, some of the issues that um, the president is talking about. With which Muzenginyo dealt 
with His Excellency the President. Oyo Nenjamba Muduri Oyo Tiduzu Wamundu, do you can't move with Zuzu Nikuga? Vege Vege Wandu Oyo Nemundu Jamba Utangi. You have heard uh, what are the leaders have uh, said about. Uh, and just to pick some of uh, the uh, what we've been able to gather, for instance, say Senator James Orengo has termed him as a multi-party crusader, and of course remembering him on how when during the clamor of multi-party democracy in Kenya in early 90s, when it was impossible for forces that were agitating for the return of multi-party democracy to secure venues. Orengo has said that Mzengi uh, Nyukariuki would more often allow meetings to take place at his home. That is when uh, proponents for uh, multi-party democracy failed to uh, get clearance to hold meetings. And he also said as that uh, he took that opportunity to challenge our politicians allied to those ones against the BBI initiative to cease the fire. And he has extended an olive branch to them. Let's listen into what the AG says. His confidence, courage, and political acumen gave us the zeal to navigate the deep waters of Kenyan politics. That Honorable Bunginyo Kariuki was synonymous with success and discipline is in absolutely no doubt. Having served both in the private and private sector with excellence and dedication, he demonstrated the virtue of consistence of purpose and dedication that saw him being sought to give guidance in both political, business, and social issues. He was gifted with a rare ability to grasp the challenges of the times and to use his skills to venture into the projects that created opportunities for the benefit of so many others. This endeared him to Kenyans of all walks of life. As a highly motivated, decisive, and result oriented individual, the Honorable Ginyo Kariuki possessed excellent managerial skills, organizational proneness, and financial acumen. This is demonstrated by the many business enterprises he initiated in various sectors of our economy, ranging from agriculture, hotel, and real estate. A devoted leader, Honorable Kariuki will also be remembered for the roles he played in the improvement of the community. He was also very passionate about sports and helped the growth of indigenous Kenyan golfers at a time when the game was widely regarded as an elite sport, only reserved for the very rich in society. Evidently, Muse Ginyokariuki was blessed with many unique attributes and a productive life. He touched the hearts of many people in more ways than one. To them, I know they will miss his wise counsel and guidance. To you, Mama Wangare, and the family, as you mourn the death of Muse Ginyo Kariuki, may our prayers and those of other Kenyans of goodwill give you and your family the strength and fortitude to move on.
May you take solace from the word of God in Revelation 21 at verse 4, which says, And God will wipe away, will wipe away all their tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. We're privileged that the Honorable Lawrence Ginyo Kariuki lived amongst us and we thank God for the time we shared with him. May the Almighty God rest his soul in everlasting peace. Signed on this third day of March at State House, Nairobi, by His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya. God bless you all. Thank you very much, and from there then we had it over to uh, the church to continue with the rest of the program. Thank you, and God bless.